Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update for Friday, August 11th. Hope everybody had a good week of trading. Let's take a quick look at the markets and then go through the trades for the week. Starting with volatility, VIX had a little spike above 18, quickly sold off and we're closing the week below 15. So quite a, uh, quite a range in VIX this week. Taking a look at the S&P, uh, S&P, so on the 7th, so that was Monday, had a big bounce, big rally. Uh, Tuesday, uh, a big sell-off, followed by a little bounce. Wednesday, uh, had a sell-off, followed by a bounce, followed by another sell-off. Thursday, big bounce, followed by a sell-off. And then today, uh, a little bit of a gap down and then rallied back up to close pretty close to where it opened the, the previous day. So kind of a wild week. Uh, NASDAQ also finished lower on the week. Russell finished lower on the week and Dow a little bit more sideways. Gold and silver lower on the week. Notes and bonds uh, kind of back and forth. 10-year yield uh, on the rise again back up above 4.15. Oil stronger on the week. Natty Gas had a big sell-off Thursday uh, but a little bit higher on the week. Uh, uh, soybeans kind of choppy, wheat kind of choppy to lower, corn choppy to lower, euro and the pound kind of choppy sideways, and Bitcoin kind of choppy hanging around that right between right between 29,000 and 30,000 for Bitcoin. So um, kind of a, a wild week of just intraday, pretty, pretty solid sized intraday swings, right? And uh, which can be can wreak a little bit of havoc on zero DTE. Uh, so with that, how did I do with zero DTE altogether? Uh, a little bit of a red week, down about fifty eight hundred bucks, following over thirty thousand in profits last week. So unfortunately, couldn't follow up that one with a with another green week. But um, based on what happened today on Friday, got uh, got a good chunk back. So but still ended the week. Red. So let's break down these different zero DTE strategies. I uh, had an AM ratio, oh, no Thursdays. I uh, had an AM ratio, oh, no Tuesday. Oh, yeah, one Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday's AM ratio minus 3,600. Uh, my Monday, Wednesday, Friday AM ratio had three of those one Monday, one Wednesday, one Friday. Monday was plus 2,600. Wednesday, minus 5,000. And then today, a little over 3,100 on zero DTE ducks. I uh, had two ducks. One was discretionary, uh, and that I booked 840 on that. And basically what I did there is that was the day that market was really selling off. I waited for it to, to sell off um, pretty good. In fact, you'll see I got in at 1042 my time, so that would be about – a little over two hours after the market opened. So uh, I marked it as discretionary. That's not really a mistake. I'm just using the mistakes tag to uh, to indicate discretionary in my system here. Uh, but booked a $840 profit. And then the, the duck today, so I, I closed half of it out at 20%. So I booked 600. Um, the, ro the rest will actually settle today. Uh, so that'll actually be about a $1,500 trade once the, uh, once the remaining settle. And then next setup, I don't think I didn't do any ratios this week. I don't believe, no. Yeah, so uh, power hour, tranche one, tranche two, tranche three. How did I do with power hour? Not so great. Minus 19K, and that's with a record, my personal best power hour today on Friday. Um, so I booked, what is that, 9, 10, about 14,000 in power hour today, uh, but still down 19K for the week. So a little bit rough for power hour. On Monday, tranche one was a winner, but tranche two and three were losers. Tuesday, tranche one was a loser, tranche two and three were winners. On Wednesday, all three tranches, losers. On Thursday, scratched out a small win on tranche one because I reduced my stop. Uh, but tranche two and three were full losers. And then, like I said today, all three tranches money. So um, 
you know, there, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, is, is, is it's not working or market conditions have changed. You know, I mean, to me, it's just a normal course of, of price action. Uh, you know, yes, last week I had an 80% win rate. This week I have a 33% win rate. Average those together, it's still, you know, still profitable and still right in range with the, with the win rate. So I would uh, highly um, encourage you to kind of back out, take a, take a, you know, zoom out, take a bigger perspective look before you start changing things. You know, there's a lot of uh, talk about position size, and that's what it really comes down to. You know, if, you're, if you can't go through a drawdown like this, based on the position size that you're doing, you were trading too big to begin with. That, that's period, point blank, that, that's it. There's nothing wrong with the strategy. It's all about your risk tolerance and your position size based on the way that you're trading it. Um, so I, you know, I really want you to focus on dialing that in and making sure that when you do go through a drawdown, like we saw this week, that you're able to you know, accept it. You know, Mark Douglas talks about in trading in the zone being com completely accepting risk, and that's what it comes down to. It really does. It really comes down to, are you position sizing to a point where you can completely accept the risk if you were to take full loss? Look, I took full loss on all three tranches that day. Does that suck? Yeah, it sure does. But guess what? That's what I signed up for when I chose the position size that I did. So I, I hope that, that you all kind of gravitate to that. And, you know, the, the idea of kind of you know, there's a lot of different ways to, to position size. You could do it based on your account value. Uh, I don't do that because I trade other strategies in the same account. If you have an account that you just trade zero DTE with, then that's probably a decent way to do it. And then, you know, based on your account value, um, you're position sizing up as it grows and you're position sizing down as it, as it comes down. That's one way to do it. For me, I like to choose my position size one month at a time, and I'm doing that every single day for the entire month and regardless of what happens. And if I want to change for the, for the next month, then I'll change it for the next month. But, you know, just those little tweaks, just those little psychological changes in your, in your trading can make a huge difference. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. Uh, moving on. Let's see. Quiet lunch Friday. Had one of those today. Uh, booked a little over 3300 on that one. Quiet lunch Monday. Yeah, booked a little over 3000 on that one. Quiet lunch Tuesday. I don't think I had one. Yeah, no, no quiet lunch Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday PM Iron Condor. Had one of those for a little over 3300 And then Uncle Rick came to play three winners. Uh, one was 620, one was 2400. So the 620 booked 30 percent on four of my five. Then the last one came right back and finished at max loss. So only 620 on that one. Uh, this one booked 30 percent on four, and then the last one ran for me. So I booked over 2400, and then uh, this one was uh, a little under 2000. So those are my zero DTE trades. Uh, dynamic butterflies. So I yesterday, Thursday, taught the new time fly class. So all of those trades will be posted in the Butterfly Trades channel. If you haven't had a chance to watch that, the course is posted in the Butterfly Course channel. I also posted it in the Calendar Course channel uh, just because it does involve uh, calendars as well. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to look at that, check that out. All right, so uh, butterflies. So uh, this was a time fly that I, that I booked. Um, obviously before the class, that was plus 950. Uh, put on a new uh, woodpecker fly in rut. And actually that should be a flathead woodpecker. Let me change that real quick. BB flathead woodpecker. There we go. Um, so put on a new one of those, I'll show you that. And then this time flies still open. It show, it's showing minus forty six hundred because I put on it was on one it was on the day yes yesterday yeah where I added the calendar adjustment when, when the price was shooting up and then we had that huge sell off so I ended up closing that piece out 
for loss, uh, but I'll show you that one. Um, I'm pretty close to break even on that actually uh, total. And then we added a new one today after the class. And so let me show you those. Go to SPX. That's, uh, here's here's that zero DTE duck. So you see, I, I booked six hundred on it, and then I've got another nine hundred and twenty that didn't show up yet. So a little over fifteen hundred on that. Uh, as far as time flies, so here's the one that I'm in. That I, I, I was in this one before the before the class, but so this is where you know I put it on. Price was right here. Price rallied up pretty big, so I put on a, a calendar adjustment, and then price completely sold off. So I closed out the calendar for a loss, uh, like I showed about 4,600, but you can see here I'm up about 4,100 on the fly. So uh, let's see, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, if this holds true, you know, I could be fairly profitable. I would take that off Monday, um, you know, assuming we don't get a big gap up or down over the weekend. Uh, and then the time fly that I first time fly alert that I put out after the class, uh, put this out today. It's up um, almost five, uh, almost five percent. So remember, we're targeting five to ten percent. So I just put this on today, and I had an order to close it out. If we would have gotten a sell off, uh, could have could have booked that. A uh, couple couple of comments and 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 uh, and uh, question or posts in the in the community of, of people thinking that they were already up 10% on this one because they were basing it on the debit paid. Remember, I'm looking for 5 or 10% of return on capital, which means 5 or 10% of your max risk or your buying power. You know, so in this case, uh, I put this on it's using about $10,000, call it 10450 So I'm looking for at least 500 bucks. Uh, you know, a little over five hundred dollars would be five percent. A thousand dollars would be ten percent. So not quite there yet. Um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You know, could be at ten percent when we when the market opens Monday. Uh, if it sells off a little bit, even more. If it pushes up, well, we may have to adjust and add the add the time component of the time fly. So that's uh, that's that. Uh, hope you guys like that strategy. I've been I've been liking it quite a bit. Um, all right, next category: dynamic calendars. TGIF finally back in uh, back in action, giving us a profitable trade. Get all these checked. Make sure I cover everything. So uh, for dynamic calendars, uh, like I said, we had a winning TGIF book 2300 on that. Had a 5.7 that I booked 300, uh, a 3.6 that lost um, 280. Why is that showing 5.7 and 3.6? That's not correct. That was a 3.6. Uh, B and B small winner uh, a two three booked over eleven hundred uh, small B and B winner small B and B loser and then the rest of these are open I've got a six seven a three five and a TGIF so let's take a look at those oh I didn't categorize that one yet I think it's here yeah all right so. Here's that TGIF that we just put on today. Still pretty well centered. Not much going on there yet. Um, and then my this is my uh, six seven. I've been trading these in my other account, but I'm putting them in here in toss for. Uh, for reference, which by the way, I'm going to stop doing. So, um, so I've been trading some calendars in my TradeHawk Tradier account. And so a couple things I wanna note. One, when I post the trades, 
I'm no longer going to be posting the, the toss links. What I was doing is I was setting them up as theoretical, copying them and pasting them, and then I'm having to save these, and I'm basically doing double tracking uh, with those trades and toss, but I really executed them in a different broker. Uh, it's, it's just too much. So I'm not going to be doing that anymore. So when I, even when I post the trades, I will not be posting the toss link. Um, I'm just going to be posting a screenshot of the, of the trade, um, from, um, from Tradehawk. So for you toss users who like to copy and paste the trade alerts, unfortunately, you are going to have to put them together yourselves. Um, it's just, it's just too much to, to try to track trades that I didn't execute in toss like that. So just a little public service announcement, FYI. All right. So this is the, this is the six, seven, um, that I put on towards the end of the day here. It's already up a little bit centered. We will take that off at one DTE. And then here is the three, five, which is up a little bit as well and centered. And we'll take that off first thing Monday morning. And then next category. Iron ducks had a nice win on a duck uh, near max profit, took it off for 60 cents. So a $570 winner in SPX. Then we also opened one in QQQ. So let's check out our ducks. In QQQ, price is pretty close to where we put it on. Rut, we still have a duck. It's right here in the middle. We'll be taking that one off next week. So hopefully that one can kind of stabilize and we can book another duck head. And then SPX. This one is a 822 expiration and we're kind of pushing towards the lower end of the range. So. If that one doesn't hold up and it keeps going, we'll just take that off for a loss. But if it bounces, we'll still be in good shape. NTT. So a couple things on NTT. You may have noticed in the uh, trades channel where the daily opportunities are posted, it's been pretty light on me posting current positions. And that's because I really haven't been trading many positions. In fact, I have zero NTT positions on right now. A couple of the closed trades, closed a, a gold one uh, for loss and then closed an, a Netflix short for a winner. But I have no NTT trades on. Uh, reason why, I'm not, I'm not abandoning NTT. It's just I've got a lot of different trades on these days. And NTT is just kind of taking a back seat. Um, and so, you know, I, I found myself like not paying close enough attention to my NTT trades. And then I would, uh, realize, you know, a day or two late that I should have gotten out. And I, I just, it, it's just been almost a distraction. And so I've, I've just kind of slowed down my NTT trades. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, like I said, I'm not abandoning it, but I am kind of taking a break to just see how I see how I like it. And, you know, this is, this has kind of happened over the years with my trading where, as, as, I, as I gravitate to different strategies, sometimes just based on pure capacity of, of me, you know, being able to trade everything, other strategies have had to take a back seat and, and I've stopped trading them. A good example is, you know, several years ago, I used to trade earnings announcements all the time, you know, pre-earnings trades, uh, during earnings, post earnings, and it just became too much. And so, you know, now you see, I, I, I almost never trade earnings trades anymore. So I've kind of, I've kind of shifted away from those to make room for some of the other strategies that I like to focus on. And, and so I'm, I'm doing the same kind of thing with NTT. I may decide I want to, you know, jump back in and, and obviously I'll, I'll post those when I do. Uh, but for now it's just, it's just been a little bit of a distraction. And, and from a capacity standpoint, I've just decided to kind of slow down or, you know, not, not trade it in the, uh, at least in the short term. So I'll keep you posted on that. Uh, we'll still continue to post the daily opportunities each day and all that good stuff. Uh, but just kind of informing you of where I'm at with it. Um, you know, it doesn't, it, you know, part of it obviously is it, it hasn't performed as good this year 
either. So that has a tendency to kind of lose my interest as much. Um, I'm sure if it was, you know, performing significantly like it, like it was previously, uh, I would pay more attention to it, but you know, it's just, it's one of those things that just kind of naturally happens sometimes with, with trading. All right. Next category, options, selling and hedgehogs. So booked a, booked a nice winner, $810 winner on a short strangle in oil. Uh, and then these other ones are open. So let's go to the platform and I'll, I'll show you all the open positions. 6E, we have a short strangle. Price is hanging out right here. We've adjusted this one a couple times. Uh, so we're, we're pretty close to break even on that one, but we haven't hit a profit target or anything. So still holding that. Uh, CL, this was a hedgehog that we've already locked in a profit on. Uh, just holding this uh, vertical is kind of a downside lotto, or we'll let it expire next week. ES, we've got a hedgehog that's rocking. The hogs are oinking. Uh, this one here, so it's up uh, eight or nine hundred bucks. We've got another one that we just put on this week. That's pretty. N nothing going on with that one yet. Uh, GC, we've got a reverse hedgehog. Price is hanging out right here, so not much going on with that one yet. MES. We've got two short strangles. This one is up a couple hundred bucks. We have not made any adjustments to that one. This one we have adjusted. And uh, I'll have to double check my tracking sheet. We should be getting pretty close to profit target on that one. I'll have to double check. And then NQ, we've got a hedgehog that's working well, up uh, around a thousand bucks. ZS, we've got a short strangle. We've rolled down calls on this one a couple times. We are, um, after adjustments, we're pretty close to break even on that one. IWM, we've got a hedgehog that's up a little over 100 bucks. QQQ, that was the duck, rut, uh, SPX, and then VXX, our volatility contraction trades. So this was the first one that I put on. We're up a few hundred on that. I'm, I'm looking for closer to 475-ish, um, about 50% of this max profit before I would take that off. The second one we put on, uh, I'm, I've got the same profit target, about 50% of max profit. We were, we were there or pretty close to there, and I put in an order. I got filled on one contract, so I didn't post it in the trades. I just posted it in the chat. So I started with five. I, I have four. As soon as I got filled on one contract, the market sold off. So volatility started expanding again. So I didn't get filled on the full order. So still holding both of those. So that is it. That's all the trades. That's your market update. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. And we, uh, as far as live streaming goes, I will be streaming zero DTE at the market open on Monday as well as for Power Hour Monday. So look forward to seeing you then. Have a good weekend.